Hello, everybody. Hey, um, this is going to be our third lecture on vibrational motion. And what we're going to talk about today uh, in this lecture is a pendulum. So if we have a pendulum, uh, it is going to uh, certainly behave. It's certainly going to behave uh, a lot like what we're used to with uh, a vibrational motion going back and forth. OK, so we can kind of see uh, see that um, mass there going back and forth. Um, but it is uh, it is going to be it's going to be slightly different. Uh, and so what I'd like to do is we're just going to uh, we're going to talk about a pendulum. So we're going to think about it just kind of going back and forth like this. Uh, and so what we're going to have here and we can just do it right here. And right here. Okay, so um, if it's going to go uh, back, uh, back and forth like so, right? Uh, at a certain point, it's going to have an angle theta, and it's going to have a length of l, and we're going to have a mass on the end of this. Uh, and so, if we think about what is the what is the force? What is the force? that's causing it to go back to the center, right? Remember in that um, simple harmonic motion, we're gonna have a restoring force that is proportional to the displacement, okay? So our displacement should be this, okay? But on a pendulum, um, it's a little bit different. And we're gonna talk about this. This is gonna be the, the arc length, okay? And this arc length is not, that arc length is not the same, uh, is not the same as X. So a pendulum is actually not a perfectly simple harmonic motion, but at low angles, at low angles, uh, it is going to be very close, which I, uh, which I will talk about. All right, so we want to look at this. And so we know that we're going to have the force of gravity, the force of gravity is going straight down. And we know that there is going to be a restoring force there, okay? And that right there is going to be <laughs> mg, mg sine theta. <clears throat> and we're going to have this part right here is going to be mg cosine theta, all right? So we can kind of make a reference triangle either here or here. So if that angle is theta, then this uh, then this angle uh, is theta. And so <clears throat> what we want uh, what we want here is um, a a force, okay, um, which is going the force is going to be um, equal to m g mg sine theta, okay? And when we divide by m, okay, that is going to give us, uh, that is going to give us our uh, acceleration. Uh, and that is going to equal to uh, ds over dt squared, okay? Now we can think of these two m's being in there, but they're gonna, uh, but they're gonna cancel out. Um, and so this is kind of that same setup that we uh, talked about with uh, simple harmonic motion, uh, where we have uh, the uh, second derivative of the change in position. Now, this change in position is arc length. But we're going to change this around a little bit because we know that this arc length here, uh, this, um, we'll do it up here, uh, this arc length S is going to be um, uh, equal to, um, sorry, a little brain fart here. Um, the length times the angle, okay? The length times the angle, and where that angle uh, is in radians. Uh, and so what we can do is we can now uh, replace, we can replace this L theta in here. So we're gonna have G sine theta is equal to DL theta squared over uh, DT squared, 
All right, now this L, that L is a constant. So that constant can um, go down there. Uh, and then we're also going to have a negative because it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a restoring force. So essentially what we're gonna have here is negative G sine theta over L is equal to our, um, our omega. Um, so uh, is equal to our omega and we can uh, take off, um, we can take off the um, negative here just because we know it's going, uh, we know it's going to be opposite. So what we should have here, sorry, this should be the square root, this, that would be omega squared. So we take the square root of that uh, and that goes off. So uh, here's the problem in that is a uh, sine is not the same thing. Our, our G sine theta, G sine theta over L is, um, not equal to GL. It's not equal to GL. But at low angles, at low angles, it's really, really close. And so we're going to use a low angle, a low angle approximation. And this is just to kind of uh, show you here. Now, if we have the angle in radians and the sine of that angle, so at one degree, okay, well, one degree in radians is 0 0.0175. And if we take the sine a point, uh, the sine of one degree, we're going to get 0 0.0175. Okay, so that's obviously there's no difference there. We go to two degrees and there is no difference, at least to four decimal points. And we go to five degrees and we can see that the percentage there, the difference is going to be 0 0.0001. Okay, um, so that's less than a per, uh, less than a tenth of a percent. Uh, and then we can get up here at ten, even at 10 degrees. The difference is very small. We go to 15 degrees and um, this, you can notice here that this 0.2588, that would round up to 0.26 and 0.26. So as long as the angle really is less than 10 degrees, we're really small, but we can even get away with um, 15 uh, or 20 degrees. Um, and so as we, uh, as we have this pendulum going back and forth, it is going to be um, very, very close to simple harmonic motion as long as we uh, make that uh, low angle approximation. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. And that low angle approximation tends to um, pop up in a lot of places in, uh, in physics because uh, it makes the math and makes the math uh, a heck of a lot easier. Okay, so just kind of put that in the back of your mind. So when you hear a uh, small angle uh, approximation. This is what they're talking about. All right. So we're going to end up with this omega. Okay. Since these are not equal, but at low angles, at low angles, they are, okay. They're real pretty close. So now what we're going to say is that omega is equal to the square root omega is equal to the square root of g over l okay and so now what we can do is we can say that the period is equal to uh two pi over omega and um we know that omega is the square root of g over l so we could say that this is two pi divided by the square root of g over l. And since this is in the denominator, we can flip it over and we can multiply it by the square root of l over g, okay? So this right here, okay, is essentially the uh, equation uh, that we're gonna use. So let's, uh, let's test that out, okay? Now I have got a, um, a mass, I've got the mass on the end of this uh, string and the length, the length of this string is 1.13 meters, okay? That's equal to L, okay? We obviously have 9.8 for our gravity, 
we're going to take the square root of that and we're going to multiply by 2 pi and we are going to check and see what that period is okay so um the square root of 1.13 divided by 9.8 times 2 pi is going to give us uh, 2.13. So we're going to have a period uh, of 2.13 seconds. All right. So let's test that out here. And I am going to use my timer here. And we're going to pull it back here. Again, a, a fairly low angle. And we're going to start. And we're going to say one cycle, two cycles, three cycles, four cycles, five cycles. Okay, so um, we get 10.45, uh, 10.45 divided by five, we're gonna get uh, 2.09, okay? So versus 2.09, okay? So this was the theoretical, Uh, and this was the experimental. And we can see that's pretty close. And uh, if we account for um, the, my reaction time, um, we could see that that could very easily uh, going to be the same. All right. So what is interesting here is that the mass of the pendulum, the mass of the pendulum does not matter. It does not matter in... Um, the period, it only depends on the length and gravity. So if we were to take the same setup to, let's say, uh, the moon, okay, it would have a different period because the gravitational um, acceleration is different on the moon. It's about uh, 1.6, okay? Um, so about six times, uh, six times less. Um, and um, therefore, if we end up if we end up going way up here where we have a super big angle okay then the farther the bigger the angle we go the the greater the percentage the greater the percentage of uh that would be um would be off as far as that time so we're talking probably 15 20 degrees and we're within really one percent um of there so that is you guys that is a simple pendulum all right. Now, there's not always, it's not always a simple pendulum. Um, we might have what's called a physical pendulum. So if we have some odd piece of wood like this, okay, and I have got this um, uh, nail here and I've got it through a hole, okay, and we can see that it's going back and forth. I probably should have found something that was perhaps a little bit uh, longer or bigger, but um, we are, okay, we're going to have a similar sort of um, equation here. And instead of going through the derivation, I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to give it to you. I, and I certainly will draw, I'm certainly going to draw uh, a picture here, but we could have kind of any sort of random, we could have any sort of random um, size uh, object. Uh, and then if we have our pivot point here, um, and we have our center of mass, our center of mass here, okay, then this right here would be uh, that offset. So it's essentially that, that length. And the equation, again, the equation is going to be uh, similar, but our omega there is going to be equal to uh, the square root of MGD, MGD divided by the moment of inertia. So obviously this has a moment of inertia and a pivot. And um, all right, so if that's our omega, then we can say that period is equal to 2 pi over omega, so that the period is going to be equal to uh, 2 pi times the square root of i over m 
g d uh, and d is that distance i is obviously whatever the moment of inertia is now if we have a regular object like this if we have a regular object like this okay obviously this is a regular um object because its center of mass would be in the geometric center so if we have the geometric center right here and our pivot is up here then the distance between those two uh, things is going to be our uh, our uh, this d right here okay and then we can um, move through there uh, and we can also have we can also have a torsional we can have a torsional pendulum in which we have a spring and then it's going to vibrate back and forth like this this is often the case when we have a um like a wristwatch inside a wristwatch uh there is a torsional pendulum because there's a spring it's a flat spring or a coil spring and it's it uh is wound around and it goes like this so this is what's called, this would be for a physical pendulum uh, and then a torsional pendulum, okay? We're going to have period is equal to two pi times the square root of <coughs> the um, moment of inertia divided by kappa and that's essentially just a uh, a constant very much like uh, the k for a spring all right you guys we will talk to you uh next time and um have fun